Great. Uh, hope you guys are doing great. Final week of our intensive training. That's week 12. I hope you guys are very excited. Uh, as usual, we kick the stand up with announcements. So, starting with my announcements by now. Um, of course, as you can see, we are in week 12. That schedule has been uh, shared with you guys. If you have not checked it well before, please do and get uh, get equipped with what we are going to cover during this week. Because I've also shared with you the sharing document of week 12. If you don't have access, please do. So, Mary, are you saying you don't have an announcement or you can't hear me? Okay. All right. So, another announcement is that, of course, as you're working on your profiles, um, have received the list of people who might be having raw quality images from batch five. Today, we write you guys an email. If you receive that email, please do make sure that you you submit a very nice or pro professional image that can be presentable to external people. So I guess those are the big announcements. An announcement is that the hot seat person for today is Salam. And as usual, we we have presentation for today. I haven't received any volunteer, but of course you have you guys need to be expecting this every Monday. Um does it really matter if you have volunteer or not? We have people to present on today's standard. But um why not get volunteers from this uh call right now so if you are willing to present can you raise your hand please um instead of picking people randomly i know we can do but if you are willing to present please do raise your hand so it's it's gonna be easy for us to take so, so i i can see martin he did here I need a volunteer from females, please. <clears throat> okay, guys. Um, Yabeba will join us, right? Uh, but of course, I'll kick this stand up by asking you guys how you're doing and also how optimistic are you? You know, we are um, finalizing our training, the normal 12 weeks, and we are going to go straight to the job search phase uh, by next week. So as you share how you're doing, please also share how optimistic you, ha you, you are. Um, you, you see comparing the skills that you have uh, from week zero to week 12, how optimistic are you guys? So let's start from people sharing. Um, I can start from uh, Martin. As you have a hand on, uh, even though the hand was for presentation, please share with us how the week was and also how, how optimistic you are regarding what's next. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, my hand was up because of uh, the presentation, but uh, it's okay. So the week was just, the weekend was just good and uh, there was many things that uh, I was able to do. I, I think I also got an opportunity to relax just uh, over the weekend. That is uh, on Sunday. Uh, on Saturday, I'm normally also uh, held up, but it's a it's a it's a day of rest for me. Uh, there is also uh, an unfortunate uh, thing that happened. Uh, there's a friend of mine who lost their mother, so uh, that is that was also quite uh, tough for us. So we had to be there to support uh, my friend. Actually, he was even a batch for. Uh, he was he, he was a batch for. He had ever, I think batch three or something. Yeah, uh, but uh, that was it on my side, and uh, there was nothing apart from that. I think it was just uh, spending time with family, uh, trying to also meet up. I making up new friends. Uh, that is on Saturday. Um, I made up many new friends. 
and uh, just uh, a lot of activities, farming, yeah, mm -hmm. such things outside programming. Thank you. Uh, How optimistic are you of what's coming up? Oh, for yeah, uh, I'm optimistic because uh, I think it's been a lot of uh, projects which, if the employers get to see, mm. they will, they will, it, it will give them a heads up because I, 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 I think there are tough projects and projects which are really done uh, in the enterprise level, like they are really, uh, like on the ground, that's what people actually do. So I want to believe that if uh, employers come across uh, profiles, it will be a good opportunity uh, for them to uh, give us an, yeah, that opportunity to work with them uh, from, for, from an employment perspective. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my end. Uh, that, that's all, yeah. All right, thanks, Martin. I'm also sorry to hear sad news that you shared with us. So, yeah, that's life. And what's the name of the person you mentioned that probably from Batch 4 or Batch 3? Oh, it was Batch 3. Uh, he's called uh, David Elvis. Thanks for sharing and uh, was sorry for the, the sad news. They are from Stella. Okay, first, I hope that you can hear me. I can hear uh, so, so on my end, um, last week, I was able to make some progress on the project, but um, in the middle of the week, my my laptop was just freezing on running the Docker, the the Docker compose and like all the containers running. But I have since changed um, my operating system, um, and now I'm, I'm I'm making some progress. I'm almost um, uh, done, yeah. But I haven't um, had a good um, results so far sorry for the broker's there sorry sorry for that broker okay thank you so how optimistic are you i'm quite optimistic right now um i'm finding the os change has actually made the situation better thanks Stella. Dinia. Hello, can you hear me, Brust? Yeah, sure. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, to give you an update, uh, on the weekends, uh, I have been relaxing and going over some of uh, uh, the concepts that I was struggling uh, for the past uh, 11 weeks and, uh, of course, uh, uh, <clears throat> polishing up my profiles in so on uh, apart from that uh, last week was very enjoyable and i'm glad uh, this week is in some way in some sense uh, the continuation of last week's work so i think i'm gonna enjoy that mm -hmm. yeah from my side that's my update and uh, i just want to say that uh, i can't believe uh, we are on last the last week of uh, this program and uh, it has been quite a journey so I'm glad uh, I was part of it. Yeah, it was uh, moving so fast uh, just because of you guys when you're busy. Yeah, you know, time time moves like as as fast, fast as possible. But I'm glad that you guys made it so far uh, to this point. And uh, I hope that what's coming next is going to be like, you know, the fruits of what you have already got. Um, Let's hear from Daisy. Um, thank you, Varist. Good morning. Good morning, Daisy. Um, great. Um, my weekend was okay. It was neutral. Um, I had a power outage, so um, for like the entire Saturday and Sunday, so I wasn't able to do much. I had to work for my friends. Um. 
and uh, with regard to the project, I also had issues with Docker. Like every other time I spin up Docker, everything just freezes. Um, uh, but I got a workout for that. Um, overall, I'm feeling quite optimistic, just as Martin has mentioned, the quality of the projects we've been able to do here at an academy would really appeal to our recruiters. So it's just up to us to level up and make our profiles and uh, GitHub look good enough for, uh, for a recruiter to want to know more and actually engage. Um, but most importantly, I'm just really grateful an academy who continues to make sure it's structured and running. Um, and uh, yes, I'm just very optimistic and glad to have done this for all of you. Thank you. That's amazing, Casey. Um, yeah, keep that spirit. And I'm sure you guys are going to do great uh, when it comes to job search because I'm, I'm, I'm sure, even though that some people will have to review to redo or to, to improve on what they have already done to make them look better. I'm sure you guys did amazing job and people will be excited and invested by your portfolios as well as, as long as you put so much effort in making sure that they are very, uh, you know, they can deliver a message and they can say it. Um, let's hear from Shaka Kevin and I'm sure that Yabiba has already joined, then we can kick straight to to the presentation. Good morning, Everest. Can you hear me? Good morning, sir. Yeah, okay. So last week I managed to do some of the, some progress regarding week, week 11 challenge. Uh, though I didn't like manage to finish all the, all the challenge successfully, but uh, I'm still working on the unfinished part. Uh, I'm excited for like this final week and uh, I'm quite optimistic for the job search phase. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Yabiba, good morning. Morning, Arrest. Morning. Hi, everyone. Hi, so, good morning. So we have uh, Yudidia and Martin as volunteers at uh, present, but yeah. I would like to have a female as well. Yeah, so, but I mean, I, I think I'm just going to be like, great, they are willing to present. They have been presenting. That's great, amazing. But I want something new. Like, we don't want to place yeah. on it people. So I'm not, I'm going to be very, very tough. Or you, you choose, I think from here to the next two weeks, you choose whether we want to help you like as extensively as we want, or you just be in the background. Okay, so it's really as simple as that. It's we only just help people who really are upfront and they are hungry to, because otherwise I cannot recommend you honestly just to say it to someone like, you know, take them, they will change your company. And I think the same is probably for our own. So it's going to be a very much, you know, it has been a very nice journey so far. Now it's getting to the reality. Okay, whoever is kind of willing to really get it like and to kind of do what we ask at least the minimum or more then i think that's so in a way like it's not a, an option somebody just volunteers and somebody doesn't volunteer it's it's it doesn't work that way and i can guarantee you from past experience those people who are active they just get a job and those people who are actually not active usually i mean unless they find on their own or something it just gets harder because we we don't build that much confidence because it's not only a skill confidence we need to build it's a type of like hunger you know that a commitment that someone is really not seeing job as other part of life you know it's like in in daily life you can be introvert but at least when it's required if you can't be just speaking it's just going to be harder okay and uh, three months were really to build that establishment to kind of really for us to get aware to help wherever you need it but now it's getting to the point, okay, from here on, it's really a lot more of, do you have it or you don't have it? You probably have it in a skill wise, but if you don't have it also in just that hunger wise, it's, it's very hard. Um, so I'm just gonna be very, very honest on that. Um, and so volunteer, just, it doesn't matter how. If you can't explain your work for me, for us, 
you're not gonna, I don't expect that you will be able to do the same for an employer. So that's as simple as that. Hopefully that's very clear. If you have question and if you have anything, just ask me, um, you know, whatever it is. But I just want you to be very, you know, honest to yourself. It's about trying. It's about exposing yourself to an uncomfortable position, at least until you get somewhere. Okay, so with that, I'm going to request three people, like every, like you have to summarize your work. You can present your Git or your, um, your doc or like your medium article or blog, and you take us through three minutes, think about what three minutes is. And at the three minutes, you probably should just be able to feel that, okay, I haven't finished, but can I get 30 seconds or one minute? So you can request, but think about the three minutes. And, and there's those who prepare the slide, definitely I will give you a chance at the end so you can keep it. So, and just let me know what, how long do you need? So of course the maximum I can give you is eight minutes, but uh, you can also specify to yourself, like how long do you need? And then you can go around until eight minutes, I'll tolerate you. You have prepared already slides. Okay, with that, and then I also need some people who actually worked on this week from um, working on the past project or those people who actually are on the uh, week 11 project. With that one, who's gonna volunteer? Yep, so the three minutes one, Vinayam? Yes. Yes. Okay, go on. Uh, just, just to ask, uh, Martin and Didia, do you have a slide or do you have also the three minutes presentation? Martin. Yeah, for me, I have uh, the, uh, I have the, I'm, I'm going to use the medium article that I. Okay, so how long do you need? Just the way you said, uh, eight minutes. Okay, so eight minutes. Um, and Mart uh, Iridia? But I mean, I think uh, it's unfair if you are presenting from from your medium article, I think it will be, it, it just, I'm not, I don't think it is right to give eight minutes for that and then three minutes for others. So can you make it five minutes, Martin? So until then, think about how to, how to put it in five minutes. Yudidia, do you have a slide, a presentation that you would give, or is it again a medium article? Or is Yudidia here? Okay. So for both of you, I give you, yeah, I give you five minutes. So I will give you at the end. Binyam, you can continue. Three minutes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. I'm sharing my screen. <clears throat> you can see your screen. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, now I'm going to begin my presentation. So last week's uh, project was building uh, an ELT data pipeline to uh, <clears throat> transport the traffic data from uh, a CSV file into uh, a warehouse, so the business context is clear. So I'm not, not gonna spend much time there. But basically, the the pipeline looks something like this: there is a CSV file. We'll be extracting some data out of this, and then load it into a staging table in our warehouse. From where <coughs> we'll uh, take uh, the table out to a DBT transforming. Uh, models. These models will create a dimension in fact table for us and then Redash will display it for us. So <clears throat> these steps just explain what I just did. So the technologies I used are Docker, Docker Compose, DBT, Airflow, uh, Python 3.8, uh, Redash and MySQL database. And for the ID, I used Visual Studio Code. Uh, when we come to the implementation, I got the data from the uh, Pinomia <coughs> open traffic data sets. I used their data selection uh, interface to select 
just one sample data, which is 87 megabytes in size. And then uh, I created an extraction, extracting uh, class, which has uh, a couple of uh, methods in it. One is the loading uh, part, the load CSV part, which is basically uh, the read CSV uh, method of Pandas uh, library. And then uh, once we load it, this is what the data looks like. It's It has been separated by semicolon, so uh, everything was loaded as one column. And uh, uh, since the data has is not rectangular in shape, that means uh, uh, column size for each row is different. So when I, uh, I loaded it this way for uh, on purpose, uh, then uh, I'm not sure if it's visible, but the uh, next part is <clears throat> restructuring part. I extra, uh, restructured the data into this form, which is uh, which has four columns. Uh, so I, uh, I think I'm running out of time. Maybe if, if you may add one minute for me. Go on, yeah, yeah one more minute. Okay, so uh, the trajectory uh, column contains all the points for the, each of the rows. That means uh, uh, longitude and latitude points. We, we can use this to uh, visualize the data later on and then we loaded the warehouse into our mysql i used the mysql connector library of python to do that once we did that we use the dbt to transform i created a source file schema uh, to represent our source which is a staging table and then a second model uh, three uh, three models i used to generate uh, uh, three tables one for uh, dimension which is basically the types column uh, originally and then uh, the fact summary uh, table and uh, trajectory table and uh, finally uh, this is what the relationship looks like and uh, there is a source file then dimension types uh, uh, and the fact uh, tables depend on both the dimension in the source file so yeah uh, I'm not sure I have enough time to go on. So basically, the airflow just orchestrates uh, the implementation of the above code. And uh, what about Redash? Yeah. Were you able to do something to view some? Uh, yeah, I was struggling with Redash. Uh, where I couldn't uh, uh, make connection with my database in the end, but I think uh, I figured it out on Sunday, but uh, it was too late, so I didn't add it. Okay, great. Great, awesome. Um, thanks, thanks, Biniam. I want people who hasn't gone through presenting in the past, I want them to explain their work. So somebody who hasn't been presenting in any of the Mondays. You know, we are really friends, like here, colleagues and friends, which means whatever you do, it's okay, acceptable here. You will get always feedback, nothing to worry. So just randomly just press the hand if you if you can't uh, consciously do it. That's my usually so just say like you put yourself in the un un unfavorable condition and then you would just be okay. You did yeah. I would. So do you have presentation or do you have a three minutes one? Okay. So. Then in that case, I will just give you at the end, okay? Just so that we get we finish the three minutes early, and then I will time it. Okay, salam. Yeah. There is an echo, but we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me share my screen first. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we do. I mean, it's only your your picture that's there, but if you change the screen, maybe it will come. Yeah, it's now there. Okay, uh, okay so I'm going to uh, show you what I did on my media. Uh, well, 
tell me when you see the medium block first. Yes, we do, we do see, just continue. Okay. Okay, so uh, here uh, what I did is uh, the first thing uh, we already know that uh, it's uh, an e we are going to build an ELT pipeline. So the project objective is just uh, uh, taking the traffic data and uh, storing it in a, a data warehouse after uh, loading it and transforming it. So um, the data type is already a new data. Uh, it's an open large scale data set for uh, trajectories, so that's what we used. So I uh, I used one of it, the first one, which is seven megabyte, and uh, the next thing is uh, the text stuff that I used is the first is Airflow. That's going to be used for orchestration at uh, Python for writing the script and MySQL for uh, the storage, uh, for the storage and DBT, uh, for the transformation and uh, redash for the visualization part. So uh, this is what my uh, pipeline looks like. Uh, the first thing is there's a CSV file that's already downloaded. Then after that, uh, it's uh, ext 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 extracted. That means it's going to be in a, pro in a proper Pandas data frame. Uh, then it's loaded. After it's loaded, uh, it's going to be orchestrated with the airflow and uh, it's going to be stored, the raw data will be stored on the MySQL database. After it's stored there, um, uh, we are going to work with the DBT uh, to transform the data, and then uh, we are going to display that. So the extraction uh, is, this is what I done. I'm, I'm not sure if it's visible, uh, but uh, I just um, cleaned out, and uh, this is how, what it looked like. Uh, and after that, the, the airflow and loading part, uh, well, uh, on that, uh, I, I had an issue uh, regarding that because uh, the Docker Compose YAML file that's provided on the Airflow documentation uh, was uh, big and my PC was stuck. So I used a simpler form for that and uh, uh, worked, uh, just displayed that. And when it comes to the DBT and the transformation part, I created a, a DBT instance and um, for the loading part, uh, you can see it here. This is uh, my Python uh, loaded it here the, on the SQL, on the, on the SQL. And here the DBT transformation takes place. On the DBT transformation, uh, there are two uh, dimension in fact table I extracted. And this is what the line looks like. And for the readers and visualization, I had a problem because uh, still the Docker Compose file was not running properly so uh, i'm having issues with that um, besides that uh, this is what i've done so far i'm going to complete the redash part awesome great thanks thanks for that on-time presentation as well look looks good okay henok Okay. We see your screen. Okay, good. So we can hear you, start. and now we can hear you as well. Okay, I'll just start from the system design. So, uh, as Binyam previously mentioned, that the data was not uh, rectangular, meaning it had different column links for uh, for each row. So I wrote uh, a parser that parsed the CSV file and generated two pandas data frames. One representing the vehicle information. Uh, those were uh, held in four columns and uh, six repeating columns that came after I took them and created uh, new rows for uh, like for each six columns that came and I, I connected this to uh, these two these two data frames using a unique identifier on the vehicle uh, data frame that will be repeated for each new column that's generated from one row. Uh, and then uh, I had these two uh, separate data frames that held the vehicle information in the trajectory information. And uh, after that, uh, I uh, loaded it into a Postgres database, which was the database that I was using. This uh, extracting load module is a dockerized uh, by, like a bunch of Python scripts that are dockerized and being run using Airflow's uh, Docker operator since uh, I'm running 
airflow inside the Docker container. And uh, that's, uh, that's also uh, supposed to control my DBT uh, modules that I wrote to generate like uh, sample uh, view same tables from the data that's loaded in my database. And there's also the red dash part. And unfortunately, the live demo that I was gonna show is now working for me, but I took some screenshots last night, so I can just uh, go to that for the redash part. So this were the sample vis uh, the, the sample visualizations that I did with uh, redash. I just queried the data and then selected uh, bar chart as my visualization and selected the columns that I wanted to visualize. This is the average speed uh, for each car, for each vehicle type. And the one below was uh, the travel distance that they covered uh, again for each vehicle type. And uh, again, to come back to the data format that I was talking about earlier, what the reader did was uh, convert them into these two data form data frames, and this was the the data format that I was using to save to into the database. I chose to go this route because I didn't want to have uh, like duplicates or modify the the column links uh, as new data came in that had uh, a very different links. So yeah, this was what I did on my end. Well, uh, thanks, and also just thanks for being on time. <clears throat> Great work. Shiaka? And you should ask why the others, you should ask why, especially if you haven't spoken on Mondays, you know, some people are speaking many times on Mondays, that means they really are benefiting from it. If you are not, if you haven't spoken in the past, you should ask why. Why don't you press just the, the hands? And you should be prepared to answer for me that question, if not for yourself. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I was not able to access my medium and I used like, uh, try to do like a report, a PDF report. So this is my pipeline. Uh, I, I just downloaded data, one sample data, and uh, using the airflow and some like Python script to raw data. And I just use PostgreSQL as my database and DPD to transform my data. So jumping to the project, to the explanatory data analysis, I was able to successfully load data to Pandas and do some like EDA. And this graph is like illustrating the type, unique values in each like vehicle. And then, uh, Project implementation, like I said, I just downloaded one CSV file and uh, I used Airflow to create some DAGs that was able to, to create a table and insert data from that CSV file downloaded to the, my database. And this is the data lineage in my like Airflow. And uh, I, I used DB Evra as like free multiple multi platform database to access my post -day database. And uh, as you can see, this is my database, including the table that like is rating the, the, the values extract uh, inserted from like CSV file. And uh, I used DPT to make some transformation. Uh, I did some like couple of transformation and I used NetFly to deploy my DBT transformation as you can see on this graph. And uh, I was not able to complete the redash part, but I'm trying to, to work on it. And uh, yeah, that is my work. Excellent, Shiaka, really excellent. Just the, the way, like, I'm just impressed actually by all those who presented so far. You're doing great. You are very clear, you're to the point, and, and that's really important. And I think that's everyone who will hire you, who we spoke to, they said, I don't care. I don't want to see their Git because it's going to be a mess, like in any way, just like which file, whatever. But I want them to explain to me in three minutes. And I want them to be able to really grasp the bigger picture and the smaller picture 
uh, and tell me what is important in three minutes. And you are, I'm evaluating you exactly based on those elements and you're doing great. If there is something, I will tell you, but that's really good uh, so far. So, um, dear, thanks. Okay, can you hear me? So, and also I just want to remind everyone, if you don't, even if it's not complete, even if you just did like a piece of it, you still have to own it. Like, it doesn't matter. Like the person who's evaluating you is not just evaluating because you finished the project. It's because how you dealt with your own sometimes not successful project and how you did deal with successful projects. So, you know, just to let you know. Okay. Go on there. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Hello? Go on. Yes, we do. Go on. Okay. Uh, so since the introduction, the objective and the data technologies are similar, I'm going to just skip this part and uh, describe my ELP pipeline. So uh, we have a CSV data source and uh, we have airport orchestrate uh, several tasks. The first task is going to be loading the the data to a Postgres SQL, and the second is uh, to, to transform uh, to apply several transformations uh, by using DBT. And uh, finally, we will have Predash uh, that's going to display uh, the transform tables in a uh, graphical way. So, since the, uh, uh, the implementation part is not yet written, I'm going to just uh, jump over to my code and just uh, try to uh, show you what I have. So, the way I loaded the uh, the data is uh, since it's not uh, uh, so. Uh, what 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 I did was uh, just so I have these uh, six columns, or uh, it will be grouped by uh, the track type uh, uh, to find out the one car. So I have uh, these ten columns, so they are going to be repeating, and uh, the latitude, longitude, and the rest are going to be unique. Uh, so uh, let me go to my airflow and this is my load data. So I read the data, um, I create a table and uh, I load it. So the second airflow uh, is going to be the dbt doc. So in the dbt doc, uh, I, 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 will, I will run the dbt, I'll test it and I will generate the doc. Uh, and so just uh, to show you the dbt doc, uh, I've uh, posted it on Netlify. Uh, so uh, it's, it's like this, and uh, here is the data lineage. So I have, uh, a, I have the table with the entire data, and I have uh, several other tables. So here in this table, I have only the type taxis, uh, the motorcycles, and here I have uh, a speed below uh, the, a table that has uh, the, the data set where the speed of the car size is below 50. Uh, and uh, finally, let me to show you the, the Redash dashboard. So here is uh, the dashboard I come up with. So you can see the counts of the counts by type. Here I have the speed uh, with time. Uh, here I think it's the total distance traveled by every car. Here is the, uh, their speed description in each type. And here I try to uh, load it on the map. So uh, here I think the location, I took the location was uh, the car's location, but I, uh, when I visualize it, I think it was the drone's location because it's circular and it's on uh, over buildings and so on. So it's basically what I have. Thank you. Another excellent presentation, dear, and really well done on the redash. It looks really good. Good work. Well done. Okay. Jeremy. We can see your screen. Proceed. I was focusing on last week. I can the vice location web three project. I can't hear you much. Like I think the voice is quite quite low. How about now? Now is better. Go on. Okay. Uh, last week I, I'm con I was concentrating on the refund by location web three project. Uh, Although I have I had finished setting up hard data and performing the smart contract functions, but none, none of them were connected. So uh, for last week, I was trying to work on both uh, UIF mobile and mobile app and uh, 
uh, web app application and write some unit tests for the smart contract and uh, deploy the smart contract to a link test network uh, and uh, also connect the smart contracts to both mobile app and uh, the web app. So uh, I'm going to present you from my GitHub. So uh, basically my folder structure is like uh, there is two folders, backend and frontend. In the backend, I wrote uh, the smart contract here. And for the uh, frontend, uh, we can find the mobile app and web app here. So the technology I used uh, is a solidity language for writing smart contract and uh, for the uh, for the for the front end web app i used react and uh, um, for the mobile app i used flat i used flutter and uh, uh, i used hard 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 that for a deployment uh, environment and uh, ring with test, uh, test network to test uh, my the app so uh, uh, here is my smart contract. Uh, increase so, uh, the, the text can increase the size. Okay. Have one. one. One more. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, basically, I wrote uh, uh, four functions. Uh, the first one is uh, to create employee uh, from the web app. So uh, it will create uh, based on the employee information, it will create, it will accept name, a last and longitude, and the final is a permitted range. Uh, then uh, I will get the, the employee details. Uh, I, 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 can return, I, I can return the employee details using these functions, uh, and it will get coordinates and calculate the distance. So if, uh, if the user meets the distance, then it will. Uh, uh, I haven't pushed the latest uh, code, but it will uh, uh, average the pay functions to pay uh, based on if it is fulfilled, if the condition is fulfilled. So, um, and uh, I, I wrote uh, deployment functions. So, if uh, there is uh, any change in the in the smart contract, it will update both the mobile app and the web app. So oh, I, I was really uh, working on this part because uh, uh, there will be continuous updates in the smart contract. So uh, I'm going to use this, these functions to update both the web app and the mobile app using this deployment uh, uh, script. So in the front in the front in part. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to stop you just because of time because you didn't okay. ask also extra time just uh, for I think you know you got in great you know the work you did amazing you should but in the presentation also just for the future take care of just some kind of checkpoints okay I have time constraint I have I need to show this and that and that so at least a few of things you track on your mind while you present for example just like if you are exceeding time probably just say like okay I'm exceeding time uh, do you want me to continue or I can stop here? That one, you should start practicing it. And on top of that also, maybe you haven't been prepared, but always just after your work, you, you should know that you will be presenting it sometime. So think about, for example, how to present it more than the code. I think it's already good, but in terms of like, for example, how do you, why do, if you were to deploy it, it would have been easier just like um, while you were, for example, after pressing the hand, waiting, you could have just tried to run on your local environment at least to display, because that would have given you a much more advantage. Going through code is great. If I tell you, explain to me in the code, I think that sometimes people ask that, and that's really good. What you've done is good for that. But prepare also always like these things, especially for next week, you should be preparing the four things that that is two along the dimensions. I mean, this is for everyone. Two along the dimensions that you are going, for example, if it's data engineering, two data engineering, if you are into Web3, two of your Web3, and if it is machine learning engineering, two of your machine learning, and one from each, from the other. So if you are a data engineer, then you should show something that you have done, explain a little bit what you have done on Web3 as well as also in machine learning, right? So just always 
be prepared after this. You are just at any time can be asked to explain, to talk to people. Okay? But good. Thank you. Um, okay. So, Brooke. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Let me share my screen. <clears throat> Unfortunately, my PC crashed a lot of time and I couldn't run um, uh, the implementation, but I, I will go through the... Again, again, just to give you a good comment, this is good. By able, by being able to explain that you are showing this because, you know, you don't, you have, somehow you have a certain, I think that's also a good thing to start. Okay, go on. Okay, thank you. So, um, so this is my uh, architecture architectural diagram so the first the first thing as expected is to extract and load the csv data here so we will get the raw data here and uh, the data the, the, the data storage i have used is the postgres sql so the, the raw data will be stored here in the postgres and the transformation will be maintained by dbt and every time the the, 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 the data is transformed it will um, fetch from the raw data, and so th th this uh, step will be uh, performed. And the, the the one who orchestrates everything is Airflow here, as you see. And uh, after all, what I planned is to uh, uh, to to feed where, where the, the transformed data to the Redash for presentation. Uh, so uh, the first thing is I uh, I come up with those uh, two DACs. So the first one is a data loading DAC, which is, which is going to load the data to the Postgres. And this is just a DAC for DBT. Um, so, this, so, so this is a data loader uh, uh, DAC to Postgres. So I first read the data. So as uh, the given data set is actually it's not rectangular, uh, as uh, uh, some of the, the, the previous presenters said. And in order to maintain that, I just take the the first four uh, columns, which are common for the given row, and iterate throughout the, the row in order to train the, the, the next six columns. And then uh, th that, that step will be repeated. Uh, and after that, the, the table is created in Postgres and loads the, the one which is already read here uh, to the Postgres database. And the same is here uh, in, in, in TBT DAC. So just uh, uh, complete the overall step uh, until testing what we have in our DBT. So these are just uh, uh, the DACs I have. And uh, I also try to uh, serve the, the TBT documentation in uh, uh, and the next thing what I really want to accomplish was uh, to uh, present what what I, what I have the data to the Redash, and that's that's where I'm currently working on. I I, I have some errors here, and I will do I will uh, do on that, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Well on time. Perfect. Okay. So now I think a lot of people at least have presented once. But last time I was asking either Hikma or Amal and others that you should present next time. Not those last time I presented, Stella last time presented, if I am not mistaken. Todros, I haven't heard from you probably. And that's why. Why didn't you why didn't you become volunteer to talk to? Okay, yeah, to what? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was asking you on the message that uh, can I present from my phone or ah okay so for now or for like yeah you can if you want to okay but let's try let's try it if you can okay. see it clearly. so you probably also have presented before I just forgot your name yeah yeah Is that I the did. case okay I like, did yeah um, yeah I did present yeah. can you see it. Yes, we do. Okay. So, uh, hopefully you can see my Git repo. Can you see everything clearly? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, the entire project is was uh, creating a warehouse, a data warehouse that will store our traffic data and uh, uh, transform our data using uh, 
a tool called DBT and also uh, showing those data using a dashboard using um, Redash. So this is the entire uh, flow of uh, my code. And um, so the first thing I did was uh, writing Airflow DAX, so which, which does uh, two things really, which loads the data to the uh, data warehouse first. So what it does uh, is uh, first I modify the raw data because it has some uh, repetition, like um, three or f uh, four or five um, uh, columns gets repeated, repeated multiple times, and I counted the maximum of 121,000 uh, columns. So I needed to make uh, them uh, into uh, the, our my database. So what I did was I modified the raw data into uh, change, changing those. Uh, after those 10 columns, I changed the others into one uh, column and I separated them with uh, underscore. So uh, the first thing it does is modify zero data. After that, it, it, it operates on uh, Postgres, which uh, changes the raw data and creates a warehouse database that I, it, it uses an SQL uh, um, functions. And also uh, it creates the raw data and loads the data sets after that. So, this is uh, what Airflow does, and uh, it uses the data that uh, we gave him. So here the SQLs are uh, here that creates the raw data and so on. So after uh, creating this uh, Airflow and loading the data, one thing we should do is uh, using DBT to transform the data. So it's just about uh, transforming into something. So here we I transferred the data uh, transformed into the average distance. So I get what type of car and uh, their average uh, travel distance uh, and average speed by the car type, average type, and also a traffic DBT model without the other uh, data as well. So because I was, uh, I'm not able to present to you the uh, tabs, so I will show you the image that I've got. So uh, let me show you the, the, the graph. So maybe it's not, it's, I need to download this because it's on my phone, but uh, yeah, so uh, just like this, it stores the data and it does the, uh, because, because it's, on my, it's on my phone, it's not uh, really easy to, <laughs> so let me just show you. It's okay, we, we saw one, yeah, yeah. go on. Okay. So this is my lineage. So it, it takes from the first traffic DBT model, it creates those three uh, models that I show you. The first one just removes the uh, other data types and uh, lets the only other uh, 10 columns. The second one takes the average distance by type and average speed by type car. So the, I couldn't uh, complete the uh, redash part because uh, I finished the others early, but the redash part couldn't, my docker is called, docker couldn't connect to my local uh, post tree. So yeah, so that's uh, my project for this week. Great. Thank you. And, and thanks for being willing to present from the mobile. And that's a good, you know, it's good. And okay. so. Teodros, why didn't you, have you presented recently? Uh, no, I haven't, so I can, I can present. Yeah, now. okay, so one thing is you will present, but why? I, I want you to answer now additional question. Why didn't you volunteer? Uh, so for the past weeks, I was not able to actually share. Uh, I was uh, I was not able to talk even, so I didn't actually volunteer, so I can, I can go now. Awesome, okay, yeah, go, it's just, I am, you know, I consider my role to be the pushing people so that they get comfortable to speak um, at any time. So it's not just to put you in the hot seat. Great, go on, proceed. Okay. Uh, could, can, can you see my screen? Yes, it's coming. It, it is, yeah, we can see now. Okay, so uh, this is basically the, the, the design of the system. Uh, we're going to have a CSV file of the, of the traffic data. Um, and since, uh, as the previous pr presenters have mentioned, the, the data is not uh, rectangular, and uh, so we cannot directly load it. Uh, so there's a data loader script, which basically uh, extracts uh, the vehicle information in the trajectory so that we can have uh, rectangular data. Um, 
So after extracting uh, what the airflow, airflow basically, uh, the first dark script would just extract the data and inserts it into a Postgres uh, database. And uh, after, ex after loading the data, then another dark, dark script would be in charge of uh, taking that data and transforming it into different formats that could be uh, useful for other downstream applications. So, uh, so um, there are two uh, currently schemas that I've done. Uh, we're just uh, querying to see the, the vehicle speed and vehicle distribution in the in, in the database, and then after that, uh, uh, it's just basically going to prepare a new view uh, of these uh, schemas so that that can be visualized in the Redash. Uh, I haven't managed to figure out uh, to enable Redash currently. I'm still facing some issues, but uh, I'll be working on that to visualize these this schemas. And the, the DBT docs is also uh, hosted on Netlify and it can be viewed there. So that, that's basically it. Yeah, it's too short. Uh, I'm sure you have done more, and and one way is that to really like, for example, have you wrote the report? Yeah, uh, so I have you wrote the report. So do you report. Maybe let me just reshare the screen. Because if I am the employer, I'm not sure if you understand it or not. In some way. It is good you mentioned some of the keywords, but it also you mentioned it without confidence, which basically exposes that. I mean, I don't want to ask you because you feel a little bit in, not confident. So it's kind of I might just ignore you. So in that case, you know, it's important that you really own it. If you look at the previous presentation, they went through like they wanted even, you know, exceeding time is bad in a sense that it shows that you may not pay attention if I say three minutes, but it's a good thing in some other way. It shows your enthusiasm, right? But it's the balance, but not reaching the time or not even close, unless you do really a good job, it is actually considered that you don't know how to talk. You don't know how to, you know, you are not enthusiastic about your work as well. So it is, you know, it's always just this knowing part is it's a balance. It's just because you present it in 30 seconds without enthusiasm doesn't mean good. So I'm just really giving you that direct thing at this point. You have to be able to, yeah, think about like how to reach three, three minutes in three minutes. If you finish in three minutes, that's fantastic. If you then say anything substantial within that three minutes, that means describing exactly the challenge, the part, you know, all of the things, the previous presentations were all good. So now for you, like just go through, you have like now one minute, I'm going to give you just give me the part of the understanding that you have, as well as also the kind of what was challenging and where you spend most of your time. Show me where, you know, the heart of the, the work that you have done. Okay, so, um, um, so should I just share the code and maybe Explain, explain more on that. On that, uh, would that um, it is more. Enough? It's it's right now. If you share the code, it would be more than one minute, right? So, how are you gonna tell me exactly the, you know, like by the heart of the work? It means the one that took you time, the one that you spent more time, the one that you had kind of taught a lot about. So, what was the challenge? In some way, yeah. then how do you circumvent it? Yeah. So uh, basically while working, the, the main challenge I faced was initially to extract the data, uh, trying to understand like the, the, the trajectories uh, and trying to convert it into columnar format so that it can be easily loaded into the database. Uh, that was the, the initial challenge I faced. Uh, after that, uh, basically coming up with a uh, schemas for DBT to be, to extract valuable insights from the data. Uh, so I, I, I have to uh, basically read more into SQL queries uh, so that I can extract uh, basically something that could be of useful information that can be visualized downstream. Mm -hmm. 
so that took a bit more time uh, for me, especially uh, with, uh, previously having not much experience on SQL. So those two parts are uh, what took more time and still the redash part is not uh, working for me. Basically, looking it and uh, connecting it to my local database is not still working for me. So uh, those, those are the major challenges in this project, but uh, the two of them uh, I've managed to uh, uh, find a way through them, but for the redash, I'm still working on that currently. Excellent. You know what has changed now in between the previous presentation and now? You are confident. I sensed it. And I probably annoyed you a little bit that it became, you became more confident. And that's what I, I, I actually want you to talk to. The tone, the tonality that you used now in the last one is what I want you to present your work on. Because it communicates, it's, you know, from experience, everybody picks up, you know, we're human. We pick up when you are shy, when we, we pick up whatever. And the tone that you use now, just because I slightly probably got, kind of felt you needed to stand up and that's what I want. So, and that was good as well. So, great. Keep that one. Keep this feedback. Okay, thank you. Samuel, Samuel Allen. Why didn't you, like, have you talked recently? Yeah, Samuel, go on. Uh, so, sorry, my internet was uh, going out. Uh, was... Okay. So, do you uh, want to give us three Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me set it up. So you can you see my screen? Not yet. Probably it will come. I think it's coming. Yeah, we now can see your screen. Okay. Uh, so this week's prior target was to build a data warehouse that will be able to store raw data set from a Pinot and data set and then store it on up. Uh, I used Postgres uh, SQL and then do the transformation using dbt. And uh, all this uh, uh, flow will be orchestrated by Airflow. Next, uh, the as other said, the C CSV file was not uh, rectangular, so and it would be a little bit of transformation to do before loading the data. After loading the data, to the Postgres, so after changing the data, then uh, we use the Airflow to manage the. Uh, to do that, we use two. I uh, use uh, two schemas, and one was first to create a table. Then next, it was to load the transform data into the Postgres SQL. After that, uh, this this just shows the connection to be made with Airflow. After connection, then the transformation needs to be so. Mm -hmm. Until now, we just extract and load to the database, but the T part was missing from the ELT procedure. So you we use the DBT to transform the data. I haven't done much on the transformation. I just uh, used uh, uh, the uh, unique type and get the sum of the average speed average and the distance traveled by each vehicle. Also, the counts that was on the roads at that particular time for each vehicle. Then again, we use Airflow to orchestrate uh, the, the steps, but uh, I didn't uh, fully finished it. I didn't uh, connect it to the Redash because one, because of uh, I was, uh, the Postgres uh, square was on my local and uh, for Redash I used Docker. So it uh, had a hard time connecting, but I, I have no the problem now and I'm working on it currently uh, for that, yeah. And any other, I used also a callback function, which when the DAG fail, uh, 
Let's see. Let's see. Emails. That's okay. it from here. Great. Wonderful. Okay. Um, so I, I remember at least recently you talked Daisy and Ken, but you can proceed, Daisy. Just uh, give us briefly, and then Ken. Um. Thank you, Yabibal. Um, can you see my screen? It's just it's coming. I think yeah, we can see now your screen. Um, okay, great. So this week's task was basically to um, work on a data warehouse tech stack using both PostgreSQL, DBT, Airflow, and uh, Redash. Um, maybe before we start, um, I wasn't able to get to the Redash bit mostly because of my PC. Um, I had a lot of downtime while setting up Docker. Um, so I will start the first part of my presentation through the Medium article and wind up with uh, um, my GitHub. So um, basically for this week, we are working with Pinyuma data um, and basically it's traffic data collected through drones. And just for the over, for the data overview, I worked with a small subset of about 76 MB um, and it, ha it had 761 rows and uh, 10 columns and this is what it looks like. And for the tech stack, basically this is how it goes. First, I have a loaded um, Pinyuma data set in my uh, machine locally. And I'm able to load it to my data warehouse using um, PostgreSQL and a Python script. Um, and it's going to be um, orchestrated using um, Airflow. Uh, for the data warehouse, first I start with raw data and then um, it's processed through dbt. And then we're able to visualize it using a red dash, um, dashboard. I proceeded to have a high level view of the tools I will be using, um, but we've already gone through that already. And this is just a walkthrough on how to set up most of the tools. Uh, yeah, but basically this is my connection script to be able to load data to your local database and then proceed to um, dbt. So for dbt, first of all, I was able to um, initialized dbt using dbt in it and I, I worked on uh, my profiles or tm files uh, to align that with the dbt underscore project or tm file uh, just to make sure we are reading on the same page after that I was able to run um, dbt debug and uh, on running I was able to come up with uh, the following queries there's a cars one just to view the number of cars, the cycles, you see the number of motorcycles, um, list distance, list speed, um, along with taxis and now all the types. Um, to visualize this further, um, I have the documentation here, which basically highlights the project um, having uh, the following um, models and uh, the following views similarly. Uh, and uh, this is just a view of the graphs, but as I have seen from everyone who's gone before me, they are supposed to sort of connect at this point. So I'll definitely be working to ensure that. Um, and finally, for the, I, I will just work to set up a cache and make sure everything is connected and working together. Wonderful. Thanks, Stacey. And yeah, Ken. Hello, good morning. Morning. So allow me to share my screen. Yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, thank you. So I'll just begin by explaining the a general 
overview of the workflow. So first, this <coughs> is the design of the project. So I have, I load the data from the original source. So I download the CSV file, this, the data into a CSV file on my local machine. After downloading the data into a CSV file, I extract it. Since the data was not in a rectangular format, I had to do some necessary, a little bit of kind of a transformation <coughs> to a new CSV file from the original one to a new CSV file. So that is the extraction part. Then I load that data into a Postgres database. Once I have it, then I apply transformation using dbt. And once I have the transformed data, I present it on a redash dashboard. So for this initial part for extraction and loading, I was able to complete it. I'm currently working on the dbt part. So maybe I'll just show you whatever I have so far on my GitHub. <clears throat> so to, to, load, to extract the data from the original CSV file, first I wrote a script. <clears throat> the, this extract data script, it transforms the original CSV file into a new one with 6 5 columns so track ids vehicle types travel d average speed and tra trajectories once the data is transformed it re returns a data frame and that uh, that data frame is saved to a csv file in this function so this is the <coughs> the new csv file i will use to load the data into a warehouse then i also wrote a script So the data migration script, not this one, sorry. This data migration script. <clears throat> In this script, I defined a connection class. This script connects the, it creates the database in Postgres, the actual database and the table to be used for storing the data. So this script just creates the data, the table and then after creating the table, there is a script for loading now the data from the original CSV to the database, this one now. It loads the data from <coughs> the CSV file to, to the database. Now to orchestrate this, I wrote two DAG scripts. So <coughs> this uh, data migration DAG, this one has only one task. What it does is just to <clears throat> it creates the database table so it creates the traffic flow table into in the Postgres database and then i have my main dag that does the actual loading of the data in the table so this one now here <clears throat> the traffic flow dag it has two tasks so first it will import the data from the csv <clears throat> then it will load that data inside <clears throat> the database. So the part for extracting and loading have been successful. It took me a lot of a bit of time to just get around it. Then for the DBT part, I haven't I, implemented. Okay, so I think also just the time might be slightly longer now. So okay, so where so you spend mostly on this, and this uh, codes. Yeah, extraction. Okay, ex uh, the extraction. Fast trans okay. trans transforming the CSV into a way that I can. Yeah. A form that and, I can load it. And in. just in terms of naming migration, what do you mean by migration? Because you're just doing normal loading, and so it's kind of that's by migration. For example, this week what we are saying is that. Now you have something in a database, in a Postgres database. Now you want to put it into MySQL. And then you had a script that was written to do something. You have to then write another script to, to also migrate that one. 
So when we think of migration, I think it's, if you are thinking of from the source, it's not in that way. It is, so it's kind of the wording might be slightly tricky. Just what you mean is by load or uh, extract or something, but not migrate. I think you're, I don't see any migration from one system to another system. Of course, it facilitates some kind of from the source. Now you can use the same thing with slight change to another uh, thing. But if you are thinking of industry level that you have already used certain system, let's say Postgres and something in the past, let's say Redash, you have been writing codes, like you have hundreds of codes and you know lots of tables. Now you wanna change to some other, this is, let's say Cassandra or let's say like, you know, somewhere else, maybe you have been running it in Google Cloud and then you wanna run it now into um, some place, let's say AWS, that's migration. So just the naming, you should be careful. But great, okay. Clean, but you could just go slightly faster for that again, you are not paying attention for the time. So pay attention for the time. And always just, it doesn't hurt you just to really just say like, okay, I'm running out of time. I know it's because you didn't remember. So it's not because you, you know, you, you think it's not useful, but to remember, you have to start, you have to keep track of essential elements in a conversation. And so one of the essential elements is that you have a constraint and that constraint, as we say sometimes is time. Another thing is, of course, if it's online, if you keep talking for a very long time, if someone asks you, tell me about, you know, what you like, and then you are talking about, I don't know, 10 minutes, something that person might be put off, right? So you have to, it's an online communication, so you have to keep asking questions and interrupting. So, okay, with that one, and I wanna ask, so I have seen a few people, Doug Mawin, have you talked recently? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Ken, thank you. You can mute Doug Maui. Okay, we can't hear you. Maybe you have typed, I don't know. Uh, okay. Okay, so prepare at least for next week. You should be the first one to be able to, to tell us and get in a good connection. So for one time, it is, it is, it's okay to have bad connection, but for two times, it's also, it's not possible. You can't prepare. Um, and the same is for everyone, right? It's like once in a while you can have bad connection, but another time, at least for once, few times on Mondays, you should have a good internet to present, okay? So that's called preparation and take it very serious because that's where I notice, that's where we notice, that's where I usually, other than the grade, this is where we, I see how much you have done and in terms of how much you have grasped it. Sometimes doing it and grasping it can be slightly different. Okay, and then Matilda, yeah, last week you said you would present more on next week's, why didn't you volunteer? I'm not putting you in a hot seat. I'm just much more providing that that platform where you can just feel normal. Do we have her on the call? Hello? Sorry? We have Matilda on the call. I think we had. Maybe we don't have any more unless... Maybe she, she dropped. She left. Okay. Um, okay, great. So I think this was good and just notice that you are just job ready. So prove that. Um, so I think a lot of you has already just proved for me that it's really great. I think you have arrived to a point where it's so easy to recommend you and you would go into a company and change really make a difference. So now, um, Martin, so you have five minutes if you want more you can ask for extension up to one minute. Okay, I'll, I'll first of all request for extension up to one minute. No, you have to ask at the five minute. Oh, okay, so, sorry, so let me share my screen. Yeah.
I hope you can all see my screen. Yeah, we can. All right. So um, uh, basically, I believe we've all uh, understood what the particular Basically, we've all understood what the business need was, uh, just uh, creating the ELT pipelines. And here is my uh, particular graph uh, for the ELT pipelines. And uh, we begin by, first of all, getting the CSV. We begin, first of all, by getting the CSV. We load it uh, using SQL Alchemy and Python and doing some Python scripting. And then uh, we can load it. Uh, we can have our raw data and then we use dbt transformations to uh, to get the transform data and the transform data we are able to display it or uh, publish it on the report that is on the radar so uh, i did first of all some bit of uh, uh data visualization that is i i did a transformation where i went and uh looked for the locations like i there's a, there's a particular package that i used called geolocator which uh, gets you the location of that particular place so once you pass it the longitude the, lat the latitude it will get you uh, it will give you the particular location of that particular place so i created another new table for that particular transformation where it has uh this is the table uh as you can see you know that you can see my screen uh, this is the table, uh, the endpoints uh, location table. And in the endpoints location table, basically what you're looking at is the, right. basically what you're looking at is the, uh, is the address, the uh, location, the city, the, uh, and, and, and all that. And then once I did that particular transformation, I went ahead to do uh, more transformations uh, uh, where uh, the first one was for migrating. Actually, th this one it it comes before uh, it. This this one for migrate the, of loading the data comes before the one for the second one for creating the table because there has to be the, the connection and I used uh, a one to many connection. Uh, that is, uh, there was a place that, because there there are places where uh, the location could be more than once. So uh, two different vehicles could be in more than one place. I mean, it could be yeah, it could be in more than one place. So when you look at it from that particular angle, that's a one-to-many relationship. I also created another table. So I had three tables in total, which I was using to uh, create the connections in the DBT. And uh, this is just uh, the DAG scripts. Uh, it's because it isn't, I, I think I'll have to format it well so that you can be able to see the particular code. And uh, the, 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 the first DAG script was for loading the data. The next DAG script was uh, for my, for creating the tables, then the third DAG script was for performing now the transformations, uh, the different transformations that were there. So it was just basically extract load dbt ML and ML training. This was, I was just thinking in my mind, what if we could also uh, do some bit of prediction or some bit of uh, predictive modeling uh, with the data that uh, we had received. So because I got some bit of extra time, I was, I was thinking I was also working on, on that, doing some bit of ML training. And this is just how it looks, extract load, uh, trigger the DBT cloud job run, and then uh, you can be able to perform the ML, t the, the ML training. And then when you go to the DBT, it's basically the transformations. And for the transformations, uh, what you just need to do is to write uh, custom functions, uh, that is the SQL, uh, select commands and all that. And then once we split, we can split the environments. The good thing is DBT, you can be able to split the environments and, and split my environments to two. Uh, that was the development and the production. I was yet to do the staging, but uh, I'll, I'll work on that also to be able to incorporate for the staging and then uh, once we establish that you can also write some bit of macros that was so that we can be able to reuse our functions later on and then the third and final thing is uh, we can be able to create uh, interdependencies in between the model sql uh, files so that you can be able to uh, create our relationship so when we look at uh, this is uh, just some simple uh, scripts that i was doing uh, the first one was just to, uh, to connect it to the distribution the third the second one was to connect it to the quick summaries and for the lineage this is just uh, the connecting the, the DB model to the distributions. Also, there's another one for connecting the DB models to the summaries, and the two of the two of them actually come together, and uh, that's uh, the first thing. Then uh, we go to the data warehouse. The data warehouse that I was using at this particular case was Postgres SQL, and for this one, it was just basically to design the data types and also to match the data types to the correct data, and also to import the CSV data into the warehouse and executing some bit of SQL statements to check the data and then pass over to uh, DBT to do the and handle the transformations. Then the final thing was the Redash. The Redash was just uh, it's just a good data engineering tool that we can use uh, to, to be able to connect uh, the Redash with the Postgres SQL and we're able to perform uh, different 
uh, view different charts and different tables that can be able to give us quick summaries of the data and we can be able to uh, uh, derive inferences from it. I also uh, configured the email part where it can be able to just uh, quickly uh, tell somebody in email. I didn't do for Slack, uh, just email part, uh, whether if there's anything, any challenge, uh, yeah. So this is how my dashboard looks like, uh, first of all. This is the location distribution. The location distribution uh, borrows from the location table. Uh, the location table is this one, the ID, the place, the address, and the landmarks. And for the particular distribution, for the particular uh, location distribution, it will just tell you, like, for example, you can see over here the, the uh, yeah, I see my time is over. I request for one minute. Great. Yeah, you are granted. All right, so uh, we can see that over here it will just tell you like uh, which one is the which which type of car is the one that uh, has is 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 on which particular place like where is it that many cars are clustered so we can see in uh, these particular places uh, like uh, this the first one the second one and the third one is where there is like a jam on that particular place uh, be uh, and not on this other place because in these other places we can see that cars are not clustered as that as that much also for the time distribution is the same thing we can see at the at the very beginning there's a spike and then uh, it goes on to become a bit more uh, regular then on the distances you can see also there are uh, they are clustered on this particular place so that you can also be able to know that there's some bit of jump and the average speed that means that if they are average that means that they are actually going at the same particular place so uh, it's because uh, the jump they are quite slow so i did more uh, i did more uh, figures and when you look at the figures uh, just let me quickly uh, go uh, through this and this one it's it's just telling us that the motorcycle here was the fastest it's because it the motorcycle is fast in a jump because of how it can be able to maneuver around the jump and basically there are also other uh, functions that I was able to uh, work on, like uh, on on this on this particular one, I was able to do an inner join so that it can be able to uh, connect the two tables, the location uh, and the trans the traffic information uh, 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 table database table. Yeah, so uh, that's it from my side. I uh, thank you. Excellent, really good work. I think it's also very good that you managed to incorporate more data from outside using the location. I think that's really excellent. And also your visualization is very detailed and informing. Well done, very good. Okay, so um, Edidia, you have five minutes. You can extend for one minute. You have to request it at five minutes. Okay, go on. Is the EDDA here? Martin, you can like stop the presentation. It's not. Looks like you did is not. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. I no, didn't it's okay. I is maybe EDDA is not here? Yeah, yeah, he has been <coughs> in and out. Okay, so if he comes, then he will present, but then I think this is great. Anyone has any question? The, Mary. Hi, Ababel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I was just wondering, I, I just had a quick comment regarding the presentations not on the technical base yeah so i don't know if this is the time or maybe we can do yeah, it later okay so um it's uh from the observations uh, that i've gotten from the few uh presentations that i've heard uh, uh maybe i wanted to kind of reiterate when you are given a short period of time uh, and you have loads of things to present the idea it's not to um to present as much as you can in the in that short period but the idea is to present the most important uh, uh items of your presentation in that period basically it's about creating a hook uh, because your presentation, of course, is comprehensive and you can present it for over 30 minutes. But when you're given five minutes, it's about 
tackling um, as much as you can. Why am I saying this? Is uh, maybe giving an example of Martin's presentation, which was very good presentation. But in terms of the flow of how you were presenting, that was not the natural you. You were like running through things. And what, what usually happens when you do that is some of the things are missed out. Like it would be, it was hard to hear some of the words, probably because I'm coming maybe from a very uh, uninformed uh, point of view technically. But in terms of the wording, sometimes you, people get to miss stuff. So I just wanted to make uh, to, to to mention that, and also for the request of time, uh, additional time. Why you do that? Basically, it's an etiquette when it comes to presentations. So it's more like, okay, people have given you the five minutes of their time. Now, uh, when you see your presentation is taking more than that, um, you have the courtesy. You show them that you, you respect their time and you understand what it is. And that's why you're asking for consent for them. If you could just maybe wind up and they'll be happy to do that. So I, I think I just wanted to make uh, that clear because I think it was not very clear why you... Uh, you, you should ask for that time at the end instead of before and also with regards to speed. Yeah. Excellent, Mary. Really, really, I mean, I cannot overstate how important those two points are. I think she eloquently really put it. And in the most important part is that you, they either hate you or they like you. You think it's about your work. Most of the time it's not. It's about they either like you or they hate you. And it's really, a you know, you can, you can go and say like, no, he's wrong. I'm, I may be wrong, like, you know, and a number of time I could be wrong because I also didn't believe it for a long time. But ultimately it just boils down. Either someone likes you or they don't like you. And, and they like you mostly if you really respect them because then they can respect you. So even the request, I think my, my, what Mary was saying is really just the second point is that it is about, they gave you for some certain reason the time. It's how you communicate to that. Like whether you are, you know, either, so people can notice, you have to, just one thing you have to know. People will notice when you do it unknowingly, when you do it arrogantly, when you do it carelessly. And the two parts, they really will not forgive you the arrogant and the careless. And then the one unknowing, people can forgive you. So, you know, know that, like, I mean, it's like, if you feel that is unknowable, people with lots of experience who talked for hundreds of people like you, they would really immediately sense that. Even the change of the tone, whatever people notice, because that's what we are trained for. So that's where really, I think, you know, Mary put it in that way, and it's really important how you communicate that, you know? And then it's, you know, I, I can't overemphasize. As I said, however you like, some, someone would just really judge you. Would I want that person in my group? And then they would really think about like even the tiniest hint that you may be some form of like, I don't know, not a nice person would make them put like, okay, like do I really, you know, it's, it's kind of an emotional thing that you put on that. So I really want you to be, to be very paying attention on that. And the second, the first point that Mary said is really critical. For example, if we take, you could have just started from a dashboard, if you have a dashboard, you could go back. Maybe that's the easiest for your time consumption. Sometimes you really focus, for example, in Martin's case, he really did a lot of work, right? In terms of also adding data. That is really a value add. Like in that, because of that value add, he managed to do a lot of things. And he doesn't need to probably say the basic things. Given he, he did some of the advanced things, he could skip some of the basic things, right? Because they say this is a system and then like that, right? So sometimes as, as Mary, Mary was saying, it is about how you compress your own thing that is more important. Because if you have done, you know, if you say something that implies something else, you don't have to, when you don't have time, you don't have to state also what can be inferred, right? Because it's like, basically, if you have done that, you probably have done the other one that is not required to say when you don't have that much time. So it's really, how you reorganize in the, in the you know, when, when you're given a very short amount of time is not, a, I think, I think Mary put it nicely, it's not about to say as much as you can in that time. That's really, you know, not a brilliant compression. A good compression basically loses some information, but 
they, they sort it in such a way that the information that's lost is can be recovered back. That's real compression. And that's really a good compression. Okay. Hopefully that is that can script quite clearly and boldly that we will learn from it. Binium. That's very, very My question is Binyam, your mic is my mic is really not working now. How about now? Can you hear me? Much static noise. And Daniko. Daniko. How about now? Can you hear me or? Now is better. Go on fast. Go on fast. Very annoying. Very annoying. I can't hear you. I think it's very hard. Very hard. Your static noise is not good then. Until then, Martin. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, sorry for actually dropping off the call. I just, uh, I thought maybe at some point I wasn't able to be heard uh, throughout uh, the, I, I felt like maybe, I don't know whether I was able to be heard throughout the entire uh, presentation. You were, you did a very good presentation and it was good, it was clear. And we okay, saw everything, yeah. Zaid. Uh, concerning uh, the what the the, the 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 comment on Mary, uh, I think yeah I'll I'll go I'll put that into consideration I'll 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 I'll, I'll, I'll just figure out how I can be able to omit some information and uh, hold back others and be able to relay the things that are most important uh, to the stakeholder. Yeah, thank you, Mary. Yeah, so uh, I, I noticed that I, I went out without giving you a trick on how you can do it. So usually um, I like to explain it in like, I don't know how many of us watches news. So at the beginning of the news, the, the new people will come to you and say, okay, uh, welcome to our evening news. And these are the headlines. You, you hear them saying, okay, a man was uh, probably maybe shot dead after a dispute, a marital dispute then goes for the next one. So basically what that person is doing, it is giving you a bit of information of what happened to keep you hooked. So usually when we come for this small presentation, your target should be what is it that could make these people get hooked. Actually, uh, they might even give you more time to explain something because they were, they were hooked to the to the highlights you gave so look at it in that way what is the information i can give on this aspect so that it can leave them wanting more and, and they can even call you if it's an interview or if it's another presentation they can call you for a second comprehensive uh, uh maybe presentation but after you leaving them wanting more so that's that's usually the trick when it comes to these speeches I, I second that. And in particular, in this case, Martin, your your redash or your dashboard was really excellent, right? If you had started with that and you asked me like, you know, I have any of these things that I have done, do you want to explain? That's, that way would have been a much different perspective because now I have seen the end goal and then it would be easier for people to say like, how did you do that? How did you do that? Even you don't have to talk anything. You can ask me now to explain which part you want you want me to explain how I did it. You know, so I mean, this is just more example, but it's exactly that part of hook means something that if I don't know where you are going to end up, I just want you to finish as soon as possible. So sometimes, so it, you know, these are a lot of storytelling is a is a very engaging and is, you know on its own, it's a big big topic that people are paid more for storytelling than for actually producing the, the, you know, the components of the story. So you have to know that in any case, whether you are a data engineer, a machine learning engineer, it is, it's always like that. Okay. Binyam. I think uh, you can hear me now, right? Absolutely. Better so uh, my question is a bit technical. Uh, yeah. It has to do with the difference between ETL and DLT. Uh, the last week's project was ELT, but uh, uh, it required us to perform some kind of transform transformation during the extraction stage. So 
uh, how much transformation is, is actually allowed in, uh, in the ELT model? Uh, or, as, uh, as much as you want. So that, that's a very good question because it's one of the, the things that, you know, if you are stick, sticking with a name, you would lose that meaning. It doesn't, it is, it is not about how much transformation, it's about your model, your way of thinking. So ELT is basically, you can do, I don't know, millions of transformations before loading. So that's, but that's what's called, you can have like hundreds of databases before that you transformed one and then you transform another and then transform another, another, and then you end up on another and this, this one, you can call it basically ELT, right? So what E really stands is that your way of thinking, are you really thinking exactly, for example, when you present it, you, you distinguished that there are, or I think most of you after that, you already said it is not uh, rectangular. What does that mean? It's of course mean you could have extracted it. Some people managed to just make it rectangular and load it. Or you could just also just assume because my database is powerful enough and I can do that kind of transformations in the database. So it's basically about losing information. So in the ETL sense, the load or the database is to be used almost close to the final product. If it's a dashboard, it's to be used just writing, just using only a SQL query you're just basically build a dashboard. That's what it means. Again, you can have multiple of ETL from head to tail. So that means you can do ETL and then another ETL and another ETL. You can combine anything. It's not about, it's not really about like how much transformation is required. It's about how much information, you know, it's a, it's a way of like saying, do I really base like every time I look to a database, I assume this is the final thing and then therefore I have to do all my transformations, most of the transformation that I require before, or uh, am I kind of doing the other way? I'm just gonna be really assuming my database is so powerful for all pre, you know, other requests, I can do some transformation in the database, so I don't bother too much. I will just try to really actually model, again, that modeling is essential, right? I will model in terms of not to lose that much data, to allow future cases because transformation is cheap, I'm gonna really future cases to do. So in this case, some, some of you did the extraction and loaded, some of you just probably just put everything after the six column and into, into just without any transformation so that you can do it later. That's the philosophy. And then that philosophy, when it's interpreted just like anything, you know, is really what makes complex phenomena. So all you have to think of about extraction means you have a source and with that source may come from another ETL process, another ETL or just directly streaming from a user, but it could have been coming actually from another database itself, right? It's like, so in a way it doesn't matter how much transformation that was done before. It's all just how you now are thinking for the final thing that you're building. Are you thinking you have to load almost transform it, almost consumable data? or you are thinking like, I can load anything and then I will just transform whenever I want. Does that make it, does that make it clear? Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense. So there is a, uh, quite a, a lot of fluidity to the ideas. Uh, Absolutely. It is, it is just the central part is your way of thinking and your way of modeling the data. You know, it's like whether you are thinking to make it final or to make it like, I don't know, for someone easy, you know, you're, you're, are you thinking your database as the old database? You know, just that Postgres and MySQL, where you just most of the time, they really are kind of for the final product, just tables and rows that are clean, or are you thinking something big and destructive? ELT is much more of that, like assumes that you will be using very highly efficient it's not past Postgres and MySQL in ELT framework. You're, you're thinking of Redshift, um, you know, um, and others like uh, Snowflake and, and many others, Druid and, you know, Cassandra and some other way. But some things that support some form of really powerful transformation inside. You can even, a Snowflake, you can even run your deep learning model inside it as a transformation. So just like that. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Ed. Okay, great. I think we really have now 
10 minutes to explain the this week's challenge so i'm gonna request this call to be stopped and to be restarted so what the next challenge i mean i i probably everest so is it, been, starting, so... it has been starting already right or is it gonna start only in uh, 10 minutes it's gonna or start is it 10 also, minutes but there is also the hot seat yeah that was okay. that was, that was so, going to say so then i mean mary take whatever time you want and then let me know when you finish and then i will start after that the um, the challenge description sorry i i forgot but jeremy the last question yeah for those who are who are uh, following uh, web three carry pass uh, what are we going to do for this week should we focus on uh, the last one project yes I, I will explain that one so let's just hand over and and, uh, and apologies mary and i know that it is a fun thing that i stole from people i apologize for that but um you can take over and you can just take some time from the challenge description and i will do the challenge description 10 and then after that 10 minutes break and then i will do the challenge description so back to you guys no problem yeah but, so this was very very useful okay and uh, of course i've already changed the schedule so the challenge discussion will start at 10 uh, a.m utc so we have now time for the hot seat and i would welcome salam to put on your camera nice good to see you salam um i want to see hands from people uh ken daisy jeremy martin biniam i want your hands people guys uh so we can of course learn from salam so i also start the timer as you guys are putting your hands on okay all right we go straight first question from stella Okay, how do you unwind on a stressful day? Uh, I didn't listen, what you say? I asked how do you unwind after a stressful day? Uh, well, uh, I think I just relax, maybe uh, watch a movie, listen to music. Okay. Okay, so now we're nearing the end of the program. How are you feeling about uh, getting a job in the in general? How are you feeling? Uh, well, actually, uh, it's it's unbelievable. The first thing because uh, we are nearing the end. This is the last week. I don't know how the time flies by, but uh, it's so amazing that I've learned a lot of things. And uh, on the job searching phase, well, uh, I'm a little bit scared, and I'm so also ready uh, to put my own interest and do what I can. All right, Yabiba. Yeah, I have two questions. One is who's your role model, and the second is how do you describe in one sentence uh, your twelve weeks experience to another person, to a friend. Okay, uh, well, um, when it comes to role model, I couldn't uh, put one answer to that because I don't uh, follow one person. Um, it's just, uh, I have a lot of people that inspire me uh, due to different things. And so I'm not sure I'd say I have a role model specifically, but uh, anyone- One person, <laughs> one person that just comes to your mind now that inspires you? Okay, so it's gonna be from the music industry, and the first person that came to my mind is uh, Beyonce because she is a hard worker. So I'm inspired by that from her. So that the, what was the second question? So in one sentence, how would you describe your twelve weeks to a close friend? Okay, uh, in one sentence, I would say. Um, 
academy uh, was the most challenging, intriguing, and exciting and learnful experience uh, I have in my entire life. And I would really recommend you to join the program if you want to uh, get into another level on your career. That's what I would say. Great. Daisy? Um, what are you going to miss the most about an academy? Oh, uh, what I'm going to miss most about Tin Academy, um, uh, I would definitely miss the CBS session. It, it was, it, it's fun, it was fun. I would miss that. And also um, maybe the, the intensity, I don't know if I'm going to miss that, but I think I would. Jeremy? What's your biggest fear? Oh, my, my biggest fear is actually a regret. Uh, I would rather try something and fail uh, than wondering what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of a regret. I don't want to regret anything. I just want to decide. And it's better, I feel, than regret not doing something. Great. Um, question from me, Salam. Uh, do you, do you, did, did anybody say that you look like any celebrity? If yes, who is that? Uh, no, no, not actually. <laughs> I've never been told like that, no. Okay. Uh, Martin? Uh, who was the last person you impacted and uh, when was it? You impacted? Who is the last person you impacted and when was that? Um, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not sure who <laughs> the last person I impacted. I'm really not sure. I don't know. Uh, maybe a, a close friend. Inspiring them to keep on going. One of the teams. Two minutes, guys. Yes, Stella, go ahead. Okay, so what is the one thing that has changed in you so much since you joined Ten Academy? Oh, well, one thing that changed for me is uh, the ability that. Uh, I can do it, you know. I, I ne on the week zero, I thought on week zero, I thought I would never uh, get through all this workload. So, um, one thing I've learned is uh, you you never know until you try. So that's what the biggest lesson in academy taught me. Thank you. Um, what are two things people in your life like about you? Okay, uh, so what are the things that people like about me is like uh, I'm a quirky person. I think I have weird quirks, so people that are close to me find that funny. And uh, yeah, I think I'm thoughtful too. Maybe that's it. You guys, you have some couple of seconds, titles? Okay, Salam. Um, once you land uh, your first job, uh, what are you planning to do with your first salary? A very good question. Actually, I don't know why I was anticipated to be asked that for some reason. It's to, it's to buy a laptop because I'm having a hard time running my local compost files. So to be uh, buying a good laptop. Amazing. Ken? Will you tell your parents how much you are being paid, like your salary? Uh, my mom, I would. My dad, I don't think so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. So, guys, I guess you have, we are now out of time. Uh, thanks, Salam, for the time. Nados, I can give you a chance. A quick one. What's your favorite Harry Potter spell? 
other than abracadabra? And what does it mean? Uh, okay, the first thing uh, about abracadabra is not my favorite spell, uh, but my favorite spell is incendio, which is a fire conjuring spell. I love fire. I love that power, so I think that's a great. All right, guys, this is the end of the hot seat for today. Uh, thanks, Salam. I didn't count questions, but I think there are many questions that they asked, and I'm um, quite sure that you probably didn't answer one question, if I recall it well, but overall, the experience was good. So in one word or one sentence, how can you explain about your hot seat experience? Okay, I am going to answer that. Yeah. So, how can you explain uh, the experience of, for your hot seat? Okay, uh, my hot seat experience, uh, it was uh, it was good, I think, and it was somewhat scary. Yeah, it's a mixture of both. Okay, so let's hear from. Um, Trainees uh, say one thing that they learned from Salam. Yeah, that probably uh, could share with others from her time that she took to join us on our seat. Let's hear from uh, trainees with his entity. One thing you guys learned from Salam, from the questions you asked and also the answer you received, there might be one thing that you learned from Salam that you can that has probably inspired you. Just bring in. Uh. It's finally good to uh, hear her talk uh, this extensively on the <clears throat> stand-up. So uh, it's a great personality. She has a great personality, and uh, uh, we would miss this kind of uh, engagement in the future. So this is a good uh, uh, program, and uh, it, it lets people uh, let out their uh, inner uh, character, uh, which is beautiful when it comes out. So. Yeah. Thanks, Binia. I also like, like this um, hot seat sessions. And yeah, we see, we see with Mary, it can be something we also can continue in a job such as, like, you know, we still be together around uh, some weeks. Some people will be doing jobs, of course. But a job such as, you know, it's also 12 weeks. And I'm sure we can think of something also uh, that will keep us also motivated and also relaxed. So, you guys, thanks for the time uh, for the stand up. So I'm going to record, we stop the recording, then we take probably five minutes of break. Then I will uh, we'll take the 10 break. minutes, um, and I will yeah, start that in 10 minutes. But I will.